everyone, and welcome to this edition of Sunday Night Art History Sessions. Tonight's artist is the one and only Vincent van Gogh. So here are five key facts about our artist. Van Gogh was an incredibly religious man. In fact, his father was a priest, and Van Gogh himself did try to become a preacher, only to fail on his exams, as he was too wild, eccentric, and excessive in his use of language that apparently he turned people off. Which was a shame, but then again, I'm quite happy he did that, that uh, he made that decision because I quite like his paintings. The second thing about Van Gogh is he was an inc excessive, and I mean this man wrote a lot of letters. There is there are an excessive amount of letters which can be found in this book, Van Gogh's letters, uh, which are predominantly letters to his brother Theo, who became his confidant and his greatest support throughout his life. It was in fact his brother Theo Van Gogh which who convinced him, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, to become an artist after he saw he had a talent. Van Gogh always had a deep interest in art and a deep interest in religion, but it wasn't until his late twenties that his brother Theo convinced him. I've ever seen some of his drawings. Van Gogh headed straight for Paris, where he tried to meet you know, prominent artists such as Toulouse-Lautrec, Paul Cézanne, Claude Monet, Signac, uh, um, um, uh, you know, Gauguin, all these artists in Paris at that particular time. He felt stressed and confused ab about how to find his own voice. And it wasn't until, you know, the late sort of, eight, yeah, 1860s, 70s that he decided, I want to go to Arles in the south of France. And it's in the town of Arles, near Aix-en-Provence in south of France, where we see his finest work. When in Arles, it's where we see Van Gogh paint the most, most famous paintings, such as um, Café sur la Terrasse, which is the beautiful painting of the Café at night time, the starry night, the cypress trees, and where his distinctive artistic style emerged. Which begs the question, what is his legacy? We can describe Van Gogh as a post-impressionist. Now, what does this mean? Post-impressionism means after-impressionism. So to understand post-impressionism, you have to understand impressionism. Impressionism, quite literally, is the way you render, which means copy or depict, the way you render the natural world to the vision of your own eyes as a impression of the scene. That means that you paint the way your eyes see it. And you paint the lines, the marks, the traces on the first hand, usually outdoors, which the French called en plein air. Van Gogh did the exact same thing, painted the outdoors predominantly, painted the way that he saw it through his eyes. But his use of colour, pure colour, is what makes him so distinctive. Most artists, even around that time, would still mix their colours. They would mix certain colours to make a certain kind of violets, certain kinds of reds, certain kinds of yellows. However, it's Van Gogh that decided to paint the colour pure and straight from the tube, which is why you have that intense luminosity, that real vivacious quality, which is so characteristic in his paintings. Now, it's at this point where we have to come to the elephant in the room about Van Gogh, which of course is the chopping off of the ear. Of course, what we've done about this particular artist is he did suffer from intense mental episodes, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia in, in some circumstances as well. But the most important thing to understand about Van Gogh is that it wasn't necessarily his turbulent mind that troubled him so much, but it was how he was able to um, sort of deal with his, in, his incredible moments of ecstasy. In his letters, we see that Van Gogh was incredibly joyful when painting, ecstatic. Sometimes I get like that too. And yet to reconcile that ecstasy with the normality of human existence was what was his greatest difficulty. And he felt that nobody could really understand 